Hi everybody, it's May 20, 2019. I just want to show you the lake level, uh, the water level, at the Oroville Dam, Lake Oroville, 890.99. So it's going down, which I find a little suspect um, because it, since I've been looking at it for weeks now, it has not gone down. It has been steadily increasing. Uh, we do have a little bit more outflow than we do inflow, uh, but last or early morning and yesterday, it was holding steady at 891. 891, 891, 891, now it's going down. All right, well, oh, call me a crazy um, conspiracy theorist and how dare I question our authority figures. Well, go ahead. Uh, I do, and I don't trust the Department of Water Resources. Oh, man. Hang on. And I don't trust them for good reason. No precipitation in California. None. And nor did you have any precipitation early this morning, like in the wee hours, three, four. Um, but you did have... Well, those frequencies firing off in California. I want to point out, um, you know, I, I really have trouble with people who are not mentioning weather modification and um, linking below to ADAPT 2030, um, Mr. MB333, um, those channels. I really have a problem with, I'm sorry, because, you know, here he is, ADAPT 2030, talking about how um, we have changes in our jet stream and these massive atmospheric rivers are going to come and they're going to um, you know, just release waters over California. And this was posted yesterday, yesterday, when, well, we didn't see that, but to say that the atmosphere is producing changes in the jet stream and not include all of the technology that man is using to cause those changes in the jet stream, I find irresponsible. I'll say it right out. I'm sorry. Um, One Pacific Redwood posted this video May 15, five days ago, and he is showing you the weather modification that is occurring, oh, and it's, uh, well, re reducing the precipitation using satellite transmitters to cause those changes that an awful lot of people are just ignoring. Western U.S. water vapor loop, we can see what's happening here. Here is transmitter activity right here. And that is evaporating the moisture in the jet stream. So we've got satellite transmitter manipulation right on top of the jet stream. And that is showing up in the uh, infrared map here. We can see that the, uh, the effect of that uh, microwave transmitter or laser. This could be laser. There's only a couple of ways you can really do this effectively. And we're seeing the evaporation right about here. Look at this, right where the pen is. Everything is just disappearing. So they've isolated this storm system and the moisture field associated with that. Now, if you look at the Doppler map, first we would expect to see rain based on this uh, moisture field here, this frontal system moving right through California and Nevada. We should expect to see rain all through the southwest, all the way into Arizona, Utah, Nevada, and California, and up into Oregon. Let's go ahead and look at the, the Doppler map here right now. <laughs> we'll zoom out. First of all, we can see the uh, the pie-shaped cutouts right here at this uh, Orville uh, Doppler uh, transmitter. This is where the uh, WSR88D is located, right in Oroville, right there. And that uh, transmitter, that microwave ground-based transmitter, is evaporating the precipitation in the uh, area of the transmitter. We can see the pie-shaped cutouts. That is where the microwave energy is uh, beaming into the precipitation and evaporating uh, the, the rain. These ground-based transmitters can pan and tilt 
and they uh, they can put out a fair amount of power, pulsed power, and uh, this is the result of that. So uh, the fake news television uh, does not show these uh, evaporation patterns. Once in a while, they'll quickly flash it on the screen, but they don't leave it on the screen for people to study. Okay, so um, that's what I was saying, that I saw the precipitation being uh, dried up right before it got to Oroville. Now, they may be using weather modification to keep the rain from hitting that lake. And with more and more people talking about Oroville Dam, the less likely they will pull something to let that dam go. A lot of people have been leaving comments saying Oroville, the, the Oroville Dam, that's going to be the false flag and uh, that's going to, you know, bring about the economy collapse and a lot of people speculating, but leaving comments as if, you know, they know they're going to blow the dam. We don't know. We don't know. And one of the reasons why I'm playing the One Pacific Redwoods video is because it does confirm what I have said. Unless you are in the know, it is very hard to come out and say anything definitively. This is a whole new world with, with uh, new technology. Um, and when we are not in the know, we cannot know for sure what it is that they're doing. Now, we do know that they do have technology. Uh, they use weather mod modification. So if they are evaporating the precipitation from Oroville or uh, at Oroville because they don't want the dam to collapse, why aren't they using that weather modification to evaporate the precipitation over central United States? All right because weather is being used as a weapon and I do believe and I agree with those who leave the comment they would be very very surprised if anything happened with that dam now because so many more are talking about Lake Oroville, Oroville Dam. The more people who come out and speak publicly about this the more attention it gets, the less likely they are to do anything. And yeah, they do have the technology to evaporate a lot of the water in the lake. Um, all you have to do is do the research to find out what I am saying is actually true. So, um, I will link below to a Plain Truths video, Lake Almanor, the key to Oroville Dam flooding. Um, very good information. Lake Almanor is north of Lake Oroville and feeds into Lake Oroville. And Lake Almanor is at near full capacity as, well, a whole lot of lakes and rivers and streams around the country. So when you've had two feet of snow in May, um, I'm not sure if two feet is accurate. I heard one foot. Um, well, still, that's quite a lot. And that snow comes into Lake Alamore. And when they release that water, it feeds right into Lake Oroville. Uh, if anybody is calling you crazy because you have questions about what's happening in Oroville, there's something very wrong with them. There is nothing wrong with you. So this information, very important. Please uh, click on the link, listen, and circulate. Now, I want to bring your attention to, you know, what... A Plain Truth also is posting here in this video on Desert Research Institute and he is talking about the drones um, that they are using to lay the chemtrails 
and that's not new news, though I'm glad that he is you know, posting on this. Um, certainly the drones are far more advanced than they were when I posted on the unmanned aircraft system, the uh, patent. And this was back, uh, I don't know, 2012, 2013. I'm going to play this video. Uh, it's not, this was posted on Kafka Winston World and um, yeah, look, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to donate and I can get an editing program on my program, on my uh, computer. Thank you. Um, but right now, this is the best that I can do. So please, you know, refrain from telling me that my videos are crap. I know it. I don't have a problem with it. This is the best that I can do, and I'm getting the information out. So for all of those who believe that these are just commercial uh, airlines, flying planes that are um, doing the geoengineering or military planes doing the geoengineering. Oh boy, do they have an awful lot of methods now. And it's not just those, not just those planes. Hi folks, it is February 21, 2013. I've received a lot of comments and I've seen comments on other uh, videos other channels where people are wondering about how could it be that these pilots are spraying the skies? Don't the pilots know what they're doing? Um, how is it that there are so many planes in the sky? Well, microwave powered aircraft, unmanned. This is the patent. The present invention relates to a microwave-powered aircraft and, more particularly, an unmanned, remotely controlled aircraft to which microwave power is transmitted from a ground station and converted to useful DC power by arrays of rectifying antennas mounted on the aircraft, the aircraft being capable of long-duration, high-altitude missions. The antenna directs and focuses a high-powered microwave beam onto the aircraft, which is converted into DC power by a rectenna on the underside of the aircraft. A return tracking signal from the aircraft back down to the beaming antenna provides feedback to the ground control center to aim and focus the beaming antenna in an optimum manner on the aircraft, typically the exact center of the rectenna. When you optimize the beam-to-aircraft interface, the preferred transmitting antenna on the ground includes a variable height sub-reflector, which allows the location of the maximum beam strength to be varied in order to alter the altitude of the focused main lobe and power the aircraft during its climb to altitude. The sub-reflector may be varied several inches to change the altitude of the focused main lobe of the transmitted beam in order to track the aircraft upward. Preferably, the aircraft is towed to a height of approximately 15,000 feet and released within the microwave beam to be thereafter remotely powered up to a height of 70,000 feet, which is the preferred cruise altitude. The aircraft typically flies in a figure eight pattern of approximately two kilometers in length, directly above the ground station. Thus, the transmitted beam strikes the underside of the aircraft in a substantially vertical path. It's designed for highly efficient flight in order to stay aloft for periods of months and possibly years before requiring landing and servicing. One advantage is that the payload does not have to be an extremely costly unit as the cost of placing cargo on board the aircraft is substantially reduced. Possible payloads include simple cargo, high-resolution cameras, infrared scanners, radar equipment, parachutes containing search and rescue containers, chemical sampling units, and other equipment. Some of the missions of which the aircraft is capable include a communications link, atmospheric studies, geophysical surveys, pollution monitoring, aerial video recording, 
Coast Guard Patrol, Search and Rescue, Forest Fire Prevention, Anti-Submarine Warfare, Drug Enforcement, Missile Detection, etc. The options are essentially limitless, as the cost of putting cargo on board the aircraft and placing the aircraft aloft is dramatically reduced compared to conventional satellites. Interesting. Forest fire prevention. Do we see any of these used in these fires in the last couple of years? No. So, that's it. Uh, all the links are below. Um, obviously not the link to this video because I haven't reposted it. But um, please check out uh, check out A Plain Truths video. He has a lot of very important information.